Welcome to another video. We need to show that the square root of 1 plus the square root of 2 plus, now all the square roots stacking, all the way to n, where n is any natural number. So you can stop at any time. You can choose any number as long as it's a natural number. The answer you'll get will be less than 2. See, at first it might look as if, yeah, that looks like it. But the further you go away from the beginning, the more difficult it is for you to make that claim. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the claim, okay, in a different way and then prove it by induction. But the induction will not be going from the beginning to the ending. I'm actually going to be going from the ending to the beginning. That's called downward induction. Let's get into the video. So let's just see the reasoning behind this, okay? If I, for example, let me assume that this is true, okay? That it is possible to show it. You notice that if I square both sides, I'm going to remove the first radical. If I remove the first radical, I'm going to have 1 plus the square root of 2 plus blah 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 to the square root of n, but this is squared, it's going to be less than 4. If I subtract 1 from both sides, it looks like I am starting 2 plus the square root of 3 plus uh, blah 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 plus square root of n is less than, I've subtracted 1, 3. Notice the pattern that I just saw in the second one. When I had 1 here, it was less than 2. Now that I have 2 here, it is less than 3. Let's make one more move. I am going to square both sides again so that all I have will be 2 plus the square root of 3 plus the square root of 4 plus blah 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 plus square root of n, okay, will be less than, this will be um, 9. If I subtract 2 from both sides, I'm going to get the square root of 3 plus blah 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 plus square root of n is going to be less than 7. You see now, the proximity is no longer there. I was able to see that 1 less than 2. Now I'm able to see 2 less than 3, but as soon as I got here, this is too far. I wish this was a 4. Okay, but it's not. That's what I said by what I meant by the further you go from the beginning, the less intuitive the answer becomes. But what if we start from the ending and claim that no matter what happens, so let's, let's do some notations. Let small r starting from 1 be what we have here. Be the square root of 1 plus square root of 2 plus blah 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 all the way to the square root of n. Okay, let this be the expression that we're trying to evaluate. Now, if you write it this way, let it be equal to r. So, I'm going to say this is r, okay? Because you're starting from 1 to n. Let's call it the nested radical. So, r, I'm just saying radical. The big radical is all of it. The small radical will start from whatever number is the first number here. Now, let's do this. Assuming we're not starting from 1, like in this case, let's say we're starting from 2, let's say we're starting from 3, or 4, or 5, so let k be any of these numbers, 1, or 2, or 3, all the way to n, then we can say, then, r sub k will be equal to the square root that starts from k. So we're going to say this is k plus the square root of the next number after k, k 
plus 1 plus the square root of k plus 2. Okay, so I just want you to understand the notation that I'm about to use. Since k can start from 1, as in the original problem, it can st start from 2, it can start from 3, it can start from any number, even it can start from n. So observe this, that if we start from n, we're going to end at n. It means, notice, that if we start from n, it will just be the square root of n. Because there is no number after n. That's what you have. And one thing is obvious, that this is less than the square root of n plus 1. So now I'm starting from the end, and I'm going to go all the way to the back. Okay? So I'm going to make a claim. Claim. For all k. Okay? For all k that are natural numbers, small r of k is less than the square root of k plus 1. So I'm just going to say it doesn't matter what k is because I'm basing my idea with, from, on this observation that if you take any of these numbers, and you compute this nested radical starting from that k, the answer you get will be less than the square root of k plus 1. I don't know if this is true, but we're going to have to prove that this claim is true and then test it. Okay? So, proof by induction. So we're going to start with the base case, which is the first step in every induction proof. So we have our base case. We have k equals n. If k equals n, this is going to be the case. Where is it? Okay, we have small r sub n is going to be equal to the square root of n. And clearly, the square root of n is less than square root of n plus 1. This is the fundamental theorem of arithmetics, okay? That the square root of that anything is less than itself plus one. Itself plus anything, actually. Okay, except that anything is zero. So this is always true. This is true. Check. Now, we're going to assume It is true for some k plus 1. Because, see, we're coming from n all the way to k, instead of going from k to n. Assume it is true for some k plus 1. Okay? So, for some k plus 1, we have r sub k plus 1 will be equal to the square root this is going to be long, the square root of, we start with k plus 1, plus the square root, k plus 2, plus, um, I'm just going to do tap, 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 all the way to the square root of n. Let me erase this. So the claim here is that what you have here is less than, the square root of k plus 1 plus 1, remember, that was the claim. If k is what is here, it is less than the square root of k plus 1. So we know that r sub k plus 1 is less than the square root of k plus 1 plus 1. Okay? This is what we're assuming is true. We're now going to use this fact for the next step. So now we've gone from 
n to some k plus 1, which we're assuming is true, and we're going to use this assumption to prove the very last step, which is k. So, for any k, is going to be the square root of k plus the next thing we're going to write is going to start from the square root of k plus 1 but we set the square root of let me write it it's going to be the square root of k plus 1 plus the square root plus no k plus 2, but we just do blah, blah, blah to square root of n. Let me do blah, blah, blah here. So it's going to be blah, blah, blah plus the square root of n. Now, what do you observe? This expression here is this expression here. Okay? So we know that this is equal to the square root of k plus this expression starting from k plus 1 is r sub k plus 1. Mm. Okay, let's clean this up. Let's make it shorter. So we know that r sub k must be less than, if we put this here, it's going to be less than the square root of k plus square root of k plus 1 plus 1 square root of k plus 1 plus 1. Mm, the answer is beginning to show. <laughs> the answer is beginning to show. This is where algebraic manipulation becomes king. Because what I'm looking for is a clean expression representing square root of k plus 1. But what I have here does not look like square root of k plus 1. You see, if I can, if I squared this, it's not going to give me this because of this bad guy here that has k plus 1 in it. So I have to find a way to connect square root of k plus 1 to the square root of k. And what do I do? I know because all values of k I'm using are from 1 to n. They're all positive and greater than 0. It means that if I replace square root of k plus 1 with 2 times square root of k, I will be right. I can say that this expression is less than the square root of k plus 2 times the square root of k plus 1. Okay, now you say, okay, how could you replace it? Well, I know this is smaller than this. How do I know? Because these two match, these two match, but this is always less than this for all values of k. How do I know? Okay, since 2k, 2 square root of k is greater than square root of k plus 1 for all k. This is a fact. How do I know? Use your square both sides. If you square both sides, you're going to get 4k is greater than k plus 1. Let's prove it. Notice, if you square both sides, you're going to get 4k is greater than k plus 1. If k is a positive integer, right? If you don't believe it, just subtract k from both sides. <laughs> 3k is greater than 1. If you don't believe it, just divide both sides by 3. k is greater than 1 third. Well, k is a positive integer, so that's true. So this is always true. So my claim is true. Therefore, r sub k is less then notice that this expression under the square root sign is basically square root of k plus 1 squared. Sorry, there's a square root sign. So r sub k is less than square root of k plus 1. 
So we're, we're, we're done. So because I have made my claim, you can go plug in one here. R1 is actually what we're looking for, okay? For K equals one, let's put a check mark here. For K equals one, R1 will be equal to the square root of one plus R1 will be equal to R less than square root of one plus one. So R is less than one plus one. <sighs> R is less than two. Check. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.